for joining us today on another edition of Virtual Field Trips with Josh. Today we are going to be checking out the coral reef and the animals that live there. Uh, this is always brought to you by Center for Success and I hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. Hi everyone. And thanks for joining us today as we take a trip to explore the strange and fascinating animals that call a coral reef home. Let's start with an interesting bit of information. Did you know that 25% of the world's marine life is found on coral reefs? For example, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia has more than 1,500 types of fish living there. That's what we call an incredible diversity of life. Today, we're going to see some of these coral reef residents and find out how they all live together to create this fascinating ecosystem. One of the first things we'll notice is that all the animals here can either be really tiny, like this little shrimp, or as gigantic as the largest fish in the world, the whale shark. Almost two thirds of them are active during the day, which means they are diurnal. The other one-third usually come out at night, making them nocturnal. At first glance, life on a coral reef can look chaotic and full of commotion. In a single instant, one creature may narrowly miss becoming a meal for a predator, and another may have to protect its territory against a threat. Schools of fish run back and forth with no apparent purpose. Gradually, we see that there is actually some order and purpose to the chaos. The most important job for all of the animals is to keep from becoming a meal for one of the many predators. The only ones who don't have to worry about being eaten are those at the top of the food chain, the apex predators. Sharks are a good example of an apex predator because their large size and aggressive hunting patterns mean they have no natural enemies to worry about. Sharks have been around for more than 300 million years, much longer than mankind. They have huge, strong jaws and several rows of sharp teeth. Even if they lose a tooth, another one quickly grows in its place. This one is called the nurse shark, and it will coast along looking for spiny lobsters and crabs. They even have the ability to suck their prey out of hiding places. Another family of large predator fish is the grouper. Some are thought to weigh up to 1,000 pounds. They too will search out prey that they can vacuum up with their cavernous mouths. The barracuda is another large predator fish with strong jaws and many sharp teeth. Barracudas can grow up to six feet long and can attack with lightning speed. They also have long, streamlined bodies that help them to move fast in search of prey. Moving down the food chain, we find that some predators use poison to weaken their prey, like these lionfish. They have long spines on their bodies that are covered with venomous stingers. After stinging its prey, a lionfish is known to swallow it whole. These cone shells use their noses as fleshy harpoons to deliver poison that will paralyze their prey. This blue-ringed octopus is one of the most poisonous marine animals that there is. Their venom can kill in minutes, and that includes humans. These jellyfish are relatives of the octopus. Some species have tentacles that can sting both prey and people. This banded sea snake is a very toxic predator that can hold its breath for two hours. So, as we can see, life on a coral reef is not easy, and danger can strike at any second from any direction. Staying alive means being alert at all times. Over time, many that live on a coral reef have developed some fascinating adaptations that help in the never-ending quest for survival. This pufferfish can inflate itself in the face of danger, making it difficult for a predator to swallow them. 
these porcupine fish can also puff themselves up. But they have the added defense of this armor of sharp spikes all over their bodies. This colorful surgeon fish is equipped with small spines on both sides of their tails. These spines are very sharp, like a surgeon's knife or scalpel, and are important for survival. This is where the name surgeon fish comes from. We can see that this butterfly fish has a spot near its tail that looks just like an eye. That's why it's called an eye spot. It's there to confuse the predator into thinking that the tail is really the head. That few seconds of confusion might give the butterfly fish just enough time to escape from danger. Other fish have adapted long snouts so that they can reach into the smallest of cracks, getting into places that others can't. This means that they can pry into small cracks to grab worms, tiny shrimp, or even coral polyps that others can't reach. Another way to survive on a coral reef is to keep out of sight so your predators can't find you. The moray eel is very good at this. Although they can be up to six feet long, they also are able to hide in cracks and openings in the reef, often blending perfectly with the surrounding coral. But when it's feeding time, they'll come out of hiding. Hermit crabs live their whole lives hiding inside another animal's shell. When they outgrow one shell, they simply find another larger one as a new home. At the first sign of danger, the hermit crab can simply pull its whole body back inside the shell for protection. Some flatfish are able to hide on the ocean floor, blending in with the sand. This ability to hide right out in the open is known as camouflage. It means that a fish can look exactly like the background that it's a part of, blending into nothingness. With their long, thin bodies, these trumpet fish can look just like branches of coral. They can also change color to blend into the background. Here is another master of disguise, the crocodile fish. It too blends into its surroundings. Let's see one of the most dramatic examples of camouflage. Watch how this octopus can change itself almost instantly to blend in with the colors around it. Instant camouflage. How's that for a superpower? It might be hard to imagine that a fish's bright colors could be a form of camouflage, but this can actually be the case. Sometimes the bright colors help them blend into the background of the colorful coral landscape, which really does help them to hide right out in the open. In other cases, the bold patterns can be confusing to a predator, making it difficult to see the true outline of an animal's body. Camouflage works both ways, because it also lets predators hide in the open until an unsuspecting meal swims by. That's just what this scorpion fish is doing. Survival is not just about what the fish look like. Sometimes it's also about how they behave or who they hang out with. So, some fish species stay very close together, even creating working relationships in order to survive. Some of these partnerships are based on safety or protection, and others are based on food sources. Safety can sometimes be found by sticking together and swimming in large schools of fish. Being a part of a large group means that there's less risk of any one fish being eaten. These clownfish feel safe by staying close to sea anemones. They're protected from the stings of the anemones because they have a thick top layer of slime. In return, they help the sea anemones to stay safe by stopping other fish from attacking them. These cleaner wrasses help bigger fish by keeping them clean and free of disease. In return, the wrasses get an easy meal. These win-win situations are called symbiotic relationships. Sometimes a predator doesn't eat all of its meal and other animals may come along and finish it off. These animals are called scavengers Scavengers are not predators because they don't hunt for their food. Lobsters and crabs are examples of scavengers. Lobsters are usually more active at night, along with the other nocturnal reef dwellers. 
Hammerhead sharks, like many other sharks, are out at night to hunt. They are solitary nighttime hunters. It is thought that the strange shape of their head helps them to see up, down, and all around. It may also help the shark to sense its prey's position in the water. White-tipped reef sharks are also active at night. They have a special electrical sense that allows them to detect slight movements of sleeping fish. This beautiful mandarin fish is a secretive nocturnal fish that spends its time hiding in cracks and crevices on the reef. Its bold patterns are a warning to the other fish that they produce a bad tasting and smelly mucus. These remarkable ghost pipe fish also come out at night. As you can see, they're covered in tassels. This lets them hide in the frilly arms of feather stars or corals. Nighttime fish, such as squirrel fishes, and this big eye, usually have very large eyes in order to see as much as possible with little to no light. Not all who live on a coral reef are fish. Let's have a close look at some of the other fascinating creatures that live on and near the coral reef. We don't often think of slugs as anything particularly nice to look at, but the underwater kind come in all shapes and sizes, and many are very beautiful. They're called nudibranchs. As beautiful as they are, their velvety ruffles can be filled with nasty stingers, and their bright colors are a message to predators that they taste nasty and might even be poisonous. Sea stars are sometimes called starfish. Each of the sea star's arms is lined with suction cups. These cups help the sea star move along the rocky ocean bottom. If a sea star loses an arm, it's able to regrow a new one. These feather duster worms reach out their feathery arms to catch food and take in oxygen. This one is called a Christmas tree worm, and it opens up to become three-dimensional extending its gills so that larvae can stick to them like ornaments. These sea cucumbers have small suckers on the ends of their tube feet, which grip onto the rock so that it can walk along the seafloor. The seahorse is actually a fish, but it has a head like a horse, a pouch like a kangaroo, and a tail that can hold onto things. The male of the species gives birth to the young. This is a giant blue clam. Some can live as long as 100 years and can weigh up to 500 pounds. The clam doesn't have a head. Instead, it has a siphon that sucks water in along with oxygen and food. This is a stingray. It's a part of the family of rays, which are fish that have wide, flat pectoral fins, allowing them to glide gracefully through the water. Their name comes from the barbed stinger on the end of their tail which they use to defend themselves. Many rays, not just stingrays, have stingers on the ends of their tails. Despite these defenses, they are usually considered very gentle creatures. This magnificent creature is a sea turtle. It can hold its breath for up to two hours under the water before it has to come up for air. Even though coral reefs look very sturdy and solid, they're actually very fragile ecosystems and are some of the most threatened habitats in the world. One big threat is climate change. As the ocean's water gets warmer, it will bleach the corals so that they lose their beautiful colors and eventually die. Bleaching makes it difficult or even impossible to sustain the ecosystem because coral reef life is so intertwined. Pollution is another threat. When people leave their garbage on the beach, it can end up in a coral reef. Human sewage, pesticides, and fertilizers can get washed into rivers and streams, eventually finding their way into the oceans and reefs. Ships also leak fuel into the water, adding to the pollution. Boats can cause damage by dropping their anchors on a reef. Because a coral reef is so easy to destroy, it needs to be protected. You may be surprised to know that there are things that you can do to help, even if you've never been to a coral reef. 
you can use biodegradable cleaning products and detergents that won't poison coral reefs when they end up in the water system. Pick up any trash you see on the beach. Or, even better, volunteer in a beach cleanup event. You can also refuse to buy reef souvenirs, like shells or fish, so that hunters will have no reason to keep gathering them. You don't have to have seen a coral reef to damage one. And you don't have to be near a coral reef to help protect one. Let's do all we can to save the living treasures that are coral reefs. We hope you enjoyed finding out about life on a coral reef and hope that you'll come along on another trip with us really soon. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us on our trip to the Coral Reef. Um, we enjoy spending this new form of community with you. We love having you guys join us. Um, if you have any comments, you can leave them down below on this video. And we hope to see you next week where we travel somewhere else in the world.